Okay, so in this video, I am basically going to talk about why I think you should not use your local running version of MongoDB with Prisma. You should just go ahead and use MongoDB Atlas to set up a cloud version of MongoDB for you, which is much better and does all the hard stuff for you. If you're coming to this video and you have no idea what MongoDB or Prisma is, I'm going to just do a quick basic explanation, which will not do it much justice, but should be enough for you to understand this video. So essentially, MongoDB is an open source non-relational database or a no SQL database, which means instead of using tables and rows, MongoDB uses documents, which is a key value pair similar to an object in JavaScript. So this is what data in MongoDB looks like. And this essentially makes it easier for it to read data, for it to have data written to it and for it to scale up. It also takes up less space than a relational database like MySQL and it's usually cheaper to run. So what is Prisma? Well, you can see right here, it says next generation Node.js and TypeScript ORM. But what is an ORM? Well, an ORM is an object relational mapper. And if we think about the objects as our programming language, so that could be TypeScript in this case, the relational is the database. So usually it's a relational database and the mapper is a way for the object to communicate with the database. And that is essentially it. We're using TypeScript to read and write data to the database. Now Prisma is not the only TypeScript ORM. There are many others, but Prisma has a focus on types that others do not and it does a lot of other cool things. And if you're interested, you should go ahead and do some research. But this is the ORM I would suggest using if you're creating any node project. This is a screenshot of a Prisma schema. And this is cool in a lot of ways. First of all, if you hand this to a new developer that doesn't have the database on their system, they could essentially run this file and it would create all the tables and rows for them. So here, it would essentially create a user table and all these rows in the table. This will put it to a Postgres database, but this string can be changed to MySQL, SQLite, or even MongoDB. Now I know an ORM is kind of for relational databases, but the cool thing about Prisma is that you can use it for MongoDB, which is no SQL, and it's amazing they've managed to get it to work. One side thing I'd mention about Postgres is that you can kind of do both. So you can have no SQL in Postgres. If you want to know more, go ahead and do some research, but there's something called JSONB, JSON binary, which you can use to put data into Postgres in a no SQL format. So moving on, there are essentially two ways to connect a MongoDB database to Prisma. One way is through the cloud, so through MongoDB Atlas, which is the way that I recommend. And the second way is locally, which is the way I do not recommend. So let's talk about the first way, which is connecting through MongoDB Atlas. This is a service that MongoDB provides for you to host your database. And this does a lot of things behind the scenes. And I'll talk about a few of them. As you can see, this is a screenshot of a database I've created in Atlas. And first and foremost, you'll see, it doesn't say database, it says cluster. And what it's done is it has created three of the same databases here. So there's three here, there's a primary one and two secondary ones. This in MongoDB is called a replication set. And what this does is when data is written to the database, it goes to the primary one first and then the secondary ones get updated. The benefit of doing this is that if for some reason something happens to the primary DB and that fails, a secondary one can then take over and become the new primary. This will ensure your database is always up and running. MongoDB Atlas also gives you the correct flags to connect to your database properly from an external source. So as you can see in this URL, it sets retry rights to true and W to majority. You don't exactly need to know what this means, but MongoDB takes care to give you the correct parameters for your database to connect properly. You also get very tight security with Atlas. So as you can see here, 
I've only allowed certain IP addresses to connect to my database. If someone is trying to connect that doesn't have this IP address, they won't have access. Now let's compare all of that to how you set up MongoDB on your local machine to connect with Prisma. You're probably thinking, why on earth would I set up MongoDB locally when Atlas gives me all of these options out of the box? And if I'm being honest, I can't think of any other scenario apart from if you're somewhere that has really bad internet or no internet whatsoever, like on a plane. So I'm on a Mac, so I'm gonna give you steps that I took to install MongoDB locally on a Mac. First, I had to download BrewTap and then install MongoDB via BrewTap. Then once I've installed MongoDB, I need to download something called MongoDB Compass, which gives me a visual representation of what is in my database or collection. As you can see, this looks very different from what is on Atlas, but you can connect an Atlas collection to MongoDB Compass so you can get the best of both worlds. Creating a collection locally with MongoDB doesn't automatically give you authentication. By default, collections are open so anyone can connect to them. You don't need to have a username or a password. In order to enable that, you have to do it manually. And these are the steps that I took. I created an admin user in the admin table with a username and password and gave it certain roles. This is different from something like MySQL or Postgres, where having a username and password is mandatory, but it's optional in MongoDB. So that is something to keep in mind. Once that is set up, it is possible to then go ahead and connect your database to Prisma. This is the way the Prisma documentation expects you to connect it. So you put MongoDB as your protocol, your username and password, and then localhost 27017, which means you're connecting locally, as well as the name of your database or collection, and all the stuff is optional. One thing to keep in mind that I found out the hard way was that you need to add an admin source to the name of the table you added your admin username and password to. You need to create a flag in the query parameters called auth source and assign that to the table that you created your authentication in. So if you added your authentication, username and password to the admin table, you'll put that in the auth source flag. If you don't do that, Prisma won't connect to you properly. So once this setup is done, it is possible to read your MongoDB database from Prisma, but you cannot write to it. You can't write, delete, or patch to it. If you do, you end up getting this error. This is because at this stage, the local MongoDB collection does not support retriable rewrites. And this is something that you only get with a replica set. So in order for this to work, you have to create a replica set locally. And that is easier said than done. Replication sets are incredibly complicated to set up. And even through my time researching and reading and trying things out, I wasn't able to do it locally. There is a nice gist here, which I'll link in the description that shows just the important things to do to get a replication set working. But this didn't even help me get it up and running. So essentially, if you want to connect a MongoDB database or collection to Prisma, I would highly recommend you use Atlas. It's a lot of headache to do it locally. It takes up a lot of time. And in my opinion, it's not worth it. Just go ahead and let Atlas do all the hard stuff. That's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, give this video a thumbs up so others can find it. And subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.